Okay, hi crocheters. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing today. I'm still trying to figure that out. So it is Sunday, October 29th. Um, where I'm at in the United States, it has been unseasonably warm for October. The days are hitting 80 degrees. That's way too warm. I still turn on my air conditioner when it hits 80 degrees outside. And I'm actually still feeling a little warm today. So it's kind of throwing me off. All right, so I've got another joke of the day for you, okay? This is from my youngest, right? <laughs> my youngest is in the local tech school doing baking classes, learning how to bake, okay? Um, I think it's just a hobby because my kid really likes music and being in the marching band. But anyway, the joke of the day is how do cats make a cake? From scratch. So there you go. There's your joke of the day. Okay. All right. So um, this is what day five for our crochet along. I have been busy. See, there's my blanket behind me. Now, okay. Even though it's still warm, it's gray outside. So the lighting is kind of throwing off the color of the blanket a little bit. When I left you guys, I was working on the light orange. Okay. Since then, I have finished the light orange. I did 18 rows. Let me keep a track of my rows. I did 18 rows of the light green. I did 17 rows of the dark green and I didn't film one second of it. I kind of got in the zone of crocheting and didn't touch my camera. Okay, so right now I am up to, I've done dark pink, light pink, light blue, dark blue, dark orange, light orange, light green, dark green. I have 138 rows of the spider stitch plus row one is the single crochet and then the chain, okay? So for my blanket, I have the dark purple and the light purple left to do. I think today, I'm not gonna crochet along with you today. I think for today, what I'm gonna do is um, weave in or sew in my yarn tails that are sticking out because with the constant flipping the blanket around after every row, um, those little knots that I have, um, you'll see my first set of where I went from dark pink into the light pink. It's actually working itself a little bit loose from being, you know, thrown around. So it's time to finally sit down and weave them in. And that is what I'm going to do today. So today's video will be probably a little bit shorter than other videos because I'm not actually going to sit and crochet with you guys today. Um, I'm feeling a bit moody. I'm not so sure if I want to crochet today, but let's take you off the tripod and show you what this blanket is looking like because I, I'm, I'm in love with these colors that I picked and, you know, they're making me happy every time I pick the blanket up and look at it. So again, I have to apologize for the lighting. It is really bad in here today. Right? Like how awesome does that look going from dark to light and light to dark and then dark to light, light to dark. Oh, it looks awesome. Let's get you up close so you can see the texture of these stitches. Right? All right, let's go. I'm loving the greens together. Uh, I actually have a shirt that is um, a bright green and I was wearing it yesterday when I was working on this and my shirt so blended in with this. Now it's a shirt I do not wear on camera, mind you. It's just my around the house shirt, you know, but it's, it's very similar to these colors. But the um, the lighter orange and this this lime green, oh, I love them together so much. It gives me kind of like Halloween vibes, but not scary Halloween, fun Halloween. Right, there's that darker orange, which looks really good next to this blue because this blue is more of a teal color. Oh, they look so good together. All right, I'll take it down in a minute and start. I'll show you how I weave in the ends. Um, you guys keep uh, tagging me in your photos and sending me pictures. Uh, email is grannysquarepeg at gmail.com. There is Facebook. You can find me on Facebook and send me a message there. You can find me on Instagram, 
granny square peg. Um, you can type it together as one word or three separate words. It should come up either way. Um, your blankets are looking fantastic, but I haven't seen a lot of photos in the last week. So send me some more because I want to do a full video of all the pictures of your blankets. I want everybody to see what you guys are working on. So send me some pictures, okay? Um, <clears throat> my blanket is sitting this way. It is 48 inches wide on the mark because I just measured it uh, 48 inches wide. So that's a good size. I don't know how tall it is yet because I still have the purple to do. All right, so um, I am using a number four medium worsted weight yarn. I'm using different yarn companies. Um, I'm alternating between a light color and a dark color. And we are doing the spider stitch, which is a single crochet chain, one single crochet in the same space. And I love the texture that it gives, okay? Um, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Let's, uh, let's sit down and weave in some ends, okay? <laughs> Okay, I know this is not the best camera angle, but it's the best I can do for today. All right, so I'm gonna do it where you can see the contrast between the pink and the blue, okay? So you see how long my yarn tails are. They are somewhere between six to 10 inches long, okay? Um, I'm gonna do the pink first. So that knot, it is buried inside of the chain one that I have in there. If you guys saw me do that in another video. This is what we call a darning needle. Ooh, I'm my camera focus on that. You know, it's like a sewing needle, but longer, thicker, and it's not so pointy. It won't stab you. It's got a nice big eye on there, right? So, put that yarn in that darning needle. Ooh. Okay. So the weaving technique is, you go in one direction, then you turn your hook around, I mean your needle, and come back in the other direction, and if you can, go in a third direction, okay? And you can stick your yarn in between and underneath the stitches, right? Just find those stitches and just go right in there. But the thing is, when you do that, you do run the risk of this yarn coming back out because all you're doing is just the equivalent of crocheting over the ends. Eventually it will work its way loose, okay? So what I do is, you know how yarn is three, four fibers all twisted together. Look at this, there's one, two, three, four strands of yarn that are twisted together that make it fibrous, you know? So what I do is, is I actually use the darning needle and I split these fibers and I go through. So when I do that, it will stick and it will hold, it will grab when I weave it in. So I actually, let's see, I'll find a spot where there's a lot of stitches together and I will stick this darning needle right through those strands of yarn those four little strands that make up your yarn and I will put that needle right through it and I will go in that direction. And then when I'm done, I will go down a little bit and try to pick up a different row and then split those fibers. As I'm going underneath of the stitches, I am splitting those fibers and I am going straight through that strand of yarn with the needle. Now there is, there are other people on the internet that have done way better videos on this than I ever will. Um, I think uh, Sarah over at Repeat Crafter Me, Sarah is awesome. She did a video years ago on how she does this weaving technique. And I was already doing something like that to begin with. But her video is so much better than I will ever do. And there we go. That is how I get these yarn tails in there. And they will never ever come undone. Do they occasionally have this little end that will pop out? Yes. There is really nothing you can do about that. You just let people know who own the blanket to use um, a brushing technique with their hand. Okay. And sometimes that little bit will, will go back in. Um, or if you can trust them enough with scissors, they can get in there really close and just snip the top of that off without cutting your stitches. All right, 
But I just tell people, just use a brushing technique and more than likely it'll disappear back into the fibers. So when you do this, a lot of times you don't see it. You won't see any bulkiness. It won't change the definition of your stitches. Are you seeing any difference there? No. Do I still have a lot of yarn left over? Yeah. But I mean, I want my blankets to be nice and secure. I don't want them to ever fall apart. If anything ever happens to the blankets, it's usually because there's a manufacturer defect in the yarn. Okay. I did make a blanket for one of my kids when they were younger and with repeated washing in the washer, it did um, rub some of the fibers raw and they, the fibers had split and now there's a hole in the blanket, but it's not because of anything that I did. It's just because yarn wears out over time from being in the washer and being agitated and that happens. So wasn't anything I did. Does that mean the kid can't use the blanket anymore? Yeah, but that's okay because I'm always crocheting the next one and they're always stealing the next one anyway. I laid this one out and showed my middle child, my 19 year old. She's like, oh wow, mom, that, that is pretty. So, all right, so I feel like I've got enough in there. I'm just gonna snip that off. And can you see my, my yarn in there now? Do I still have a little left over? Yeah, and this, this I will throw away. It's not usable. It did its job. It was a yarn tail. It got sewn in or weaved in and now it gets torn away. It has no practical value. All right, let's do the blue one real quick. Now I know this is dull and boring, okay? But it is what we have to do. As crafters, we have to do the dull and boring bits, okay? Would I rather be sitting here crocheting? Yes, yes, absolutely, but this is a job that needs to be done. I have to do it so my uh, my cats aren't tempted to eat the yarn because they love those little yarn tails sticking out. And for my peace of mind, to get it done now instead of later, and I know it's a chore, I know. Just put some music on in the background, music you can sing to, not dance to, because I don't think you can dance and sew in your ends at the same time, but you can sing and sew in at the same time. Put on your 80s hair bands or your country, <laughs> classic country from the from the 70s, right? <laughs> Heavy metal? I don't know. Pop? Do you like the top 40s? Put on some music. Sing along and do the do the dull and boring jobs of crocheting. Your favorite movie in the background? It's Halloween. What kind of movies do you guys like? Do you like the the kids movies that are fun and atmospheric or do you like the horror movies with all the blood guts and gore and the jump scares? I like a mix of both. My favorite Halloween movie is the live movie of Casper. That's my favorite. I've only come to recent, recently appreciate Hocus Pocus. Okay, and there we go. Pink and blue's all done, right? Look at that, can't even see them. And it didn't take me too much time. And all I did was talk through it. Uh, all right, what else on this side do I need to do? Do the dark orange and the light orange since it's on this side so I don't have to flip the blanket over. So my newly recently 17 year old that celebrated a birthday last week says thank you for the birthday wishes. The kid is floored that you guys don't even know her because <laughs> my youngest is a her. I, I know when I talk about my kids I use they and them. That's because when I started my YouTube channels my kids asked if I didn't use their names 
and use their pictures or put them in the videos. So then I also started using pronouns instead of he, she, I use they and them. Um, I just found it was easier that way so they can keep some privacy. But anyway, my 17 year old says, thank you very much for the birthday wishes. They appreciate it. They had a good day for their birthday because their friends came over around noon and stayed till 10 o'clock at night. They just hung out all day long, watching movies, eating, board games, and just being dorky little teenagers. So, okay, I, um, I'm not always a big fan of sewing in these ends either. They do find it can be easier to crochet over them, but they, they typically do come out. They come undone. But I'm finding that sitting here talking to the camera with a bunch of nonsense <laughs> is actually pretty relaxing. So thank you guys for hanging out with me while I'm doing this crocheting chore. That is not always my favorite thing to do. So, I mean, I feel like I did a lot of crocheting this week, but I've also had a lot of stress this week, okay? The brakes are bad in my minivan and I can't afford to have them fixed. And our refrigerator broke and we had the repairman come out and replace a part and then replace another part only to find out that it's non-repairable because of some manufacturer defect and the company refuses to do anything about it. So now we have a $1,300 refrigerator that's only three years old and only the freezer works. So life has been very stressful lately. So I like to sit and crochet and forget about everything that's wrong. But then at some point, I guess I need to come out of it and do something about and be an adult and get things fixed. Okay, there we go. Now the oranges are done. Let's do this uh, light green and light orange. If you see any gaps in the editing in the finished video, it's because I went and talked about something that I'm like later when I'm doing edits, I'm like, nah, you know what? That doesn't belong in my crochet video. And I edit it out. I delete it and I get rid of it. I am liking my color choices so much that the leftover yarn that I have, I want to go ahead and start a second project <laughs> working with these yarn colors because they are, they are so pretty and they are a lot of fun. But yeah, to get your pictures to me, Facebook, Instagram, email, because I want to do a whole video showcasing everybody's blankets. And if you're just tuning in, if you're just finding my videos, we are in the middle of a crochet along doing a spider stitch. And you can go 
to my homepage on YouTube and go find the other videos. I don't do playlists yet for my videos. And still, I only have a little bit to cut off right there. All right, we're gonna keep right on going because I'm on a, I'm on a roll now. I'm in the zone. I'm grooving to music in my head because you know, YouTube won't let me put music in the videos. All right, so my battery is saying we've got four minutes left. Let's go ahead and get this dark green done. And then uh, this one side of the blanket is done for yarn tails. I know it looks like I'm just going underneath of the stitches, but trust me, I'm not. I'm, I'm pushing up from the back, making sure that this needle is going through the fibers, through the strands of yarn. It's like four strands that are all twisted together to make our yarn, right? I am pushing through. It doesn't damage my stitches at all. It doesn't damage the yarn. a nice good way to make sure your yarn and your blanket I mean your blanket is solidly made you don't ever have to worry about it falling apart okay all right so that is one side of the blanket all done so let me go charge up the battery and we will flip it over and do the other side Okay, so I switched over to my secondary camera. And I've got it sitting. It's actually sitting on my stomach. <laughs> so I can see what I'm doing. Alright, let's do this, this pink, right? Get it started. Pull that knot in just a little bit. Now. Okay, I know you can't see it, but my fingers are underneath, so I'm holding it, and I'm pushing the fibers up and trying to pull them apart a little bit as I get that darning needle in there. So you guys can, of course, you do not have to do this the way I'm doing it. If it's something that you want to try, I would suggest crocheting up a little square. You know, just do a square, 15 stitches across, a single crochet, and just um, 
practice, 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 practice any method you want to sew in yarn tails, weave them in, crochet over them to find out what works best for you. Okay? Always have some scrap yarn available. Make yourself up a little square so you can test things on. Maybe you like my idea, my way of doing this and you want to make sure that your blankets never fall apart, right? Um, so just make a test swatch. And then you can practice doing this. If it doesn't work out for you, that's okay. You let me know down in the comments below what kind of weaving method or sewing method do you like to take care of these yarn tails? All right, I didn't bring my scissors with me, so I will cut that off in a few minutes. scissors. I hope the camera can pick that up. You can see how I went through those fibers of the light blue.
That's it. All done. All right, so there we go. I've got my dark purple connected. There's our spider stitch. Let's see, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Right, easy peasy. A chain one space, yes, it's hard to find. Just find your first single crochet. Find the second single crochet. Pull them apart, and there is your chain one. Stitch markers are your friend. Oops, my hook got stuck on the green. I'm going to say that's about it for today's video. So I did add in my dark purple. And I will probably work on that sometime today. I have other things I need to go do first. But I just wanted to show you that the purple has been started. Um, <clears throat> so I've only got two more colors to go. The dark purple and the light purple. And then it's onto the border for me. And I have to get to the border before you guys do because I need to work out what I want to do first. Um, I have toyed with the idea of using the spider stitch in the border, right? To do a round of single crochet and then do the spider stitch around, you know. Um, but I'm not so sure because if I did it in the round, then the texture would go this way while the blanket, the texture goes this way. So. I'm thinking maybe that's not the way to go for the border. All right, so I do have a book called, I have a crochet book that is just all borders, okay? And I think I'm gonna sit down with you guys and I'm gonna flip through it. And if there's anything you see in there that you like that might work, let me know. Um, if you have any ideas, leave them down in the comments below. I am open to suggestions on how to do the border on this blanket, okay? Um, I think that's going to be it for me today. Did I miss anything? All right, so, you know, Bandit and Arlo always make an appearance in my videos lately, right? But it's nap time for the cats. Now, sometimes I'll lay and snuggle with them and take a nap. But now I'm talking to you guys, which is fine. It's fine. I miss my snuggle time with the cats. So I'm gonna take you off and I'm gonna show you because they're napping right next to me. Okay, because they still don't leave me during the day. So this is Bandit 
and this is bandage chair. Nobody's allowed to sit on bandage chair. And if we are sitting on his chair when he wants it, he'll sit on the floor in front of us and meow at us and say, give me my chair back. So there's bandit. Do we want to disturb him? Okay, and then right behind Bandit, this is my, my shelf. This has got all my um, variegated yarn, so I could do another Patrick Squares blanket, hopefully in 2024. But on top of this, because there's a window and curtains, there's Arlo, completely ignoring us. <laughs> I scared him. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. Why's a good boy? All right, so that's it for me today. I've got to take this blanket. I'm going to hang it back up. I'm going to take a picture of it. Probably use it as a thumbnail. Probably put it on Instagram. Don't forget to tag me, Granny Square Peg. Um, and I will see you guys. I want to do a video sometime in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Pictures of your blankets. Send me more pictures. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.